Hello, I'm teacher Karina and I'm here to talk to you about George Orwell. Eric Arthur Blair, best known for his pen name George Orwell, was an English novelist and journalist who defended awareness of social injustice, opposition to totalitarianism in commitment to democratic socialism. When people speak out against oppressive regimes or argue that the government has gone too far in snooping into private lives, they tend to invoke the ideas that Orwell first articulated 60 years ago. Orwell used his sharp wit and voracious intellectual curiosity to skewer everything from the atomic bomb to misuse of the English language. His experiences made him a passionate supporter of socialism and an equally ferocious opponent of totalitarianism. However, he was a man of contradictions. An anti-imperialist who worried when he traveled that he wouldn't be able to find proper English tea a deeply committed socialist who was equally opposed to communism. Eric Arthur Blair was born in June 1903 in an Indian British colony and moved to England when he was an infant. The Blairs were members of the middle class of society. They didn't have much money, but they did have aspirations. Eric's grades were good enough to earn him a scholarship to Ethan College in 1917. But once he got to Ethan, though, he neglected his work and his grades plummeted, so he left in 1921 without his diploma. Instead, he joined the Indian Imperial Police, the British colonial force that maintained order in the South Asian colonies. In 1922, Eric Arthur Blair set sail to Burma, where he spent five years. In 1927, he contracted dengue fever, the first of a series of health crises in his life, forcing him to leave Burma for health reasons. When he returned to England, he decided to resign from the Imperial Police. By 1927, Eric Blair had decided that he could no longer ignore his true calling. He decided to become a writer and for the next several years he drifted around Europe, first through London and then on to Paris. He picked up odd jobs that ranged from teaching to dishwashing and pretended to be a vagrant and sought treatment for his illnesses in public clinics. He even tried, unsuccessfully, to get arrested so that he could write about life in prison. He also managed to write occasionally for left-wing publications. At the time, his politics were also radical, but not very well defined. His identity as a writer began to come together in 1933 when he decided to take the pen name George Orwell. A combination of the names of the current monarch, King George V, who sat on the British throne from 1910 to 1936, and a nearby river, the River Orwell, a major waterway of the east of England. Earlier in 1936, Orwell was appalled by the impoverished conditions he encountered in England and was convinced that socialism was the best system to address such inequalities. His political evolution came in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. Orwell volunteered to fight on behalf of the left-wing Republican government, which was under attack. He stayed in Spain for six months, 
actually, the war was a dividing point in his work. Orwell was excited when Britain entered World War II in 1939, hoping that the war would convert more people into socialism. He volunteered for military service but was rejected because of his poor health. Instead, he contributed to the war effort at the BBC, where he was hired in 1941 to produce radio programs to be broadcast in India. In August 1945, Orwell published Animal Farm, an allegory of a totalitarian state, Stalin's Soviet Union in particular. Its publication was delayed because English publishers were afraid of offending the Soviet Union, Britain's wartime ally in fighting against Nazi Germany. Once the book was finally published, however, it found both commercial and critical success. Though he was thriving professionally, in December 1947 he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. His health falling fast, Orwell struggled to complete the manuscript of his final novel, 1984. He finished the book in December 1948 and in January checked into a sanatorium to recover from tuberculosis. The book told the story of a civil servant toiling under an authoritarian regime where thought crimes, the opinion controlling news speak, and doublethink, the acceptance of two contradictory thoughts at once, were rampant. The book, practically defining the idea of dystopia, was an enormous critical and commercial success. In October 1949, George Orwell died of tuberculosis at the age of 46 after having written about imperialism, social inequality, nuclear war, and the ways that language is used to keep people under control. Who knows what old George would have thought about watching his fellow men scheme against one another on a reality show called Big Brother. But what you probably don't know, and what most people uh, who use this term don't know either, is that these words and concepts have deeply influenced the way we speak and think about politics in this day and age. Thanks for watching. Bye.